fine. What are you doing? Check out Genesis 30. It's Genesis 30. Are you sleeping? Oh. Good boy. Well, okay. Genesis 30. Go lay down. He's getting to be an old man. Genesis 30. And when Rachel saw that she bare Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister and said unto Jacob, Give me children or else I die. It's a little dramatic. And Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's stead? Who hath withheld from thee the fruit of the womb? And she said, Behold my maid Bilhah, go in unto her, and she shall bear upon my knees, that I may also have children by her. And she gave him Bilhah, her handmaid, to wife, and Jacob went in unto her. <laughs> God uses all these mistakes for good, and all the sin that's going on here for good. I mean, we saw how how what a difficulty and strife it caused Abraham but they they kind of resort she resorts to the same thing and it's and it apparently tempts him and he enters into this other marriage and Bilhah conceived and bare Jacob a son and Rachel said God hath judged me and hath also heard my voice and hath given me a son therefore called she his name Dan. And Bilhah, Rachel's maid, conceived again and bare Jacob a second son. And Rachel said, With great wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and I have prevailed. She called his name Naphtali, or Naphtali. And Leah saw that she had left bearing. She took Zilpah, her maid, and gave her Jacob to wife yikes and Zilpah Leah's maid bear Jacob a son and Leah said a troop cometh and she called his name Gad and Zilpah Leah's maid bear Jacob a second son and Leah said happy am I for women will call me happy so she named him Asher now, in the days of wheat harvest, Reuben went and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Please give me some of your son's mandrakes. But she said to her, Is it a small matter for you to take my husband, and would you take my son's mandrakes also? So Rachel said, Therefore he may lie with you tonight in return for your son's mandrakes. So, I guess we all know that he was preferring Rachel. And when Jacob came in from the field in the evening, then Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come in to me, for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. So he lay with her that night. God gave heed to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son, then Leah said, God has given me my wages because I gave my maid to my husband. So she named him Ishakar. Now, I don't know if that's true there. Um, this is all, you know, they didn't need to be giving their maids out and they, to marry. They, they, the whole thing's kind of, uh, it's just what happened. It's, Flawed, flawed people doing what they're doing. Genesis 3.18. Sorry, I should have had this ready. I just want to see kind of some input on this.
I, I just want to see if, if there's a little commentary on L Leah saying, God has endowed me. Oh, no, no, right here. Leah, God has given me my wages because I gave my maid to my husband. 3018. So Dr. MacArthur says, the competition between the two sister wives is demonstrated in using their maids as surrogate mothers and declaring God had judged the case in favor of the plaintiff. Um, and uh, bartering for time with her husband and accusing one of stealing her husband's favor and in naming uh, and in the name given to one son wrestled with my sister Naphtali the race for children was also accompanied by prayers to the Lord or by acknowledgments of his providence excuse me and this bitter and intense rivalry all the more fierce through though they were sisters and even though they occupied different dwellings with their children as customary shows that the evil lay in the system itself bigamy um, which is a violation of God's ordinance in Genesis 2.24 and it could not yield happiness it's not yielding peace here Three, what was it? Three eighteen. I think that that says a lot. Um, he doesn't address this specifically. I think they're a little confused in her theology here, saying God has given me my wages because I gave my maid to my husband. Well, I think God is kind to sinners. God's kind to people, even though they're making in the midst of their mistakes, but. Yeah, we need to realize, as Dr. MacArthur said in his uh, NASB study Bible, I agree that this is, see, it leads to strife and problems. Leah conceived again and bore a sick son to Jacob. Then Leah said, God has endowed me with a good gift. Now my husband will dwell with me because I have borne him six sons. So she named him Zebulun after she bore a daughter and named her Dinah. Then God remembered Rachel, and God gave heed to her and opened her womb. So she conceived and bore a son and said, God has taken away my reproach. She named him Joseph, saying, May Yahweh give me another son. Literally, add to me another son. So we see in this God's purposes, God's providence, bringing about all these children, even in the midst of flood, um, flood, the flood clay pots that we all are. Now it can't, or and even maybe the evil and the sin. I mean, using it for good. God truly is amazing. Give me my. Now it came about when Rachel had born Joseph that Jacob said to Laban, or Laban said to Laban, send me away that I may go to my own place, to my own country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you and let me depart. For you yourself know my service which I have rendered you. But, but Laban said to him, if now it pleases you, stay with me. I have divined that the Lord that Yahweh has blessed me on your account. Um, that's curious. I have divined. Mashash. Um, the recording concordance. Well, I wonder where, where else that, that word is used. Nashash. I have divined. Is that a bad thing? Well, anyway, he he perceives he perceives that Yahweh has blessed um, the work of 
Jacob's hand. So anyway, he continued, Now name me your wages and I will give it. But he said to him, You yourself know how I have served you and how your cattle have fared with me. For you had little before I came, and it has increased to a multitude, and the Lord has blessed you. Yahweh has blessed you wherever I turned. But now, when shall I provide for my own household also? So he said, What shall I give you? And Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you will do this one thing for me, I will again pasture and keep your flock. Let me pass through your entire flock today, removing there every speckled and spotted sheep and every black one from among the lambs, and the spotted and the speckled among the goats, and such shall be my wages. So so my righteousness will answer for me later when you come concerning my wages. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and black among the lambs, if found with me, will be considered stolen. Laban said, Well, behold, would that it might be. So he removed on that day the striped and spotted male, male goats, speckled and spotted, mottled fur, or mottled skin. Speckled and spotted female goats. Uh, uh, so on that day he, he removed the striped and spotted male goats and the speckled and spotted female goats, every one with the white in it and all the black ones among the sheep, and gave them into the care of his sons. And he put a distance of three days' journey between himself and Jacob. And Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Then Jacob took for himself fresh rods of poplar and almond and plane trees, and he peeled white stripes, exposing them, uh, the white which was in them. He set the rods which he had peeled in front of the flocks in the gutters, even in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink, and they mated when they came to drink. So maybe this is, you know, kind of some kind of aphrodisiac pleasing thing kind of he just did there. So the flocks mated by the rods, the fox, and the flocks brought forth striped, speckled, and spotted. I think the key is here that God is um, increasing his his gain giving him increase jacob separated the lambs and made the flocks face toward the striped and all the black and the flock of laban and he put his own herds apart and did not put them with the laban's flock moreover when the stronger of the flock were mating jacob would place the rods in the sight of the flock in the gutters so that they might mate by the rods but when the flock was feeble, he did not put them in. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. So the man became exceedingly prosperous and had large flocks, female and male servants and camels and donkeys. Let's see. Well, whatever whatever method he's using here, whether it be sinful or not sinful, with these rods, um, whether it be you know some kind of sorcery or not, the point is is that that Yahweh is has done it. Yahweh did this thing. That is the main point for us. All right, now Genesis thirty one. Now Jacob, um, he heard the words of Laban's son saying, Jacob has taken away all that was our father's, and from what belonged to our father, he has made all this wealth. Jacob saw the attitude of Laban, and behold, it was not friendly towards him as formerly. Then the Lord, Yahweh, 
Then Yahweh said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. Wow. Then Yahweh said to Jacob, Return to the land of your fathers and to your relatives, and I will be with you. I will be with you. So, Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to his flock in the field, and he said to them, I see your father's attitude, that it is not friendly toward me as formerly, but the God of my father has been with me. You know that I have served your father with all my strength, yet your father has cheated me and changed my wages ten times. However, God did not allow him to hurt me. God suffered him not to hurt me. If he said thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. And if he said thus, the ring straked shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straked. So, thus God has taken away your father's livestock and given them to me. And it came about at the time when the flock was mating, that I lifted up my eyes and I saw in a dream, and behold, the male goats which were mating were striped, speckled, and mottled. And then the angel of God said to me, In the dream, Jacob, and I said, Here I am. He said, Lift up now your eyes to see that all the male goats which are mating are striped, speckled, and mottled, for I have seen all that Laban has done been doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed a pillar, where you made a vow to me. Now arise, leave this land, and return to the land of your birth. Rachel and Leah said to him, Do we still have any portion or inheritance in our father's house? Are we not reckoned by him as foreigners? For he has sold us, and has also entirely consumed our purchase price. Surely all the wealth which God has taken away from our father belongs to us and our children. Now then, do whatever God has said to you. Then Jacob arose and put his children and his wives upon camels. Wow. <laughs> I guess there's a little bitterness there. Rachel and Leah said to him, Do we still have any Porsche or inheritance with our father's house? Are we not reckoned by him as foreigners? For he has sold us, and he has also entirely consumed our purchase price. Wow. So, they're bitter. Um, they want to go do their own thing. He's accusing Laban of messing with his wages, so it's time to go. And he put him on camels, and he drove away all his livestock and all his property which he had gathered, and acquired livestock which he had gathered in Padan Aram, to go to the land of Canaan, to his father Isaac. Now, when Laban had gone to shear his flock, then Rachel stole the household idols that were her father's. Teraphim. And Jacob stole the heart stole the heart of Laban the Arame Aramean by not telling him that he was fleeing so this is a yep this is fleeing so he fled with all that he had and he arose and crossed the Euphrates River and set his face toward the hill country of Gilead now when it was told Laban on the third day that Jacob had fled then he took his kinsmen with him and pursued him at a distance of seven days' journey, and he overtook him in the hill country of Gilead. Now, God came to Laban the Aramean in a dream of the night and said to him, Be careful that you do not speak to Jacob, either good or bad. Laban caught up with Jacob. Now Jacob had pitched his tent in the hill country, 
and Laban with his kinsmen camped in the hill country of Gilead. Then Laban said to Jacob, What have you done by deceiving me and carrying away my daughters like captives of the sword? So I guess literally, and you have stolen my heart, is saying you broke my heart. Why did you flee secretly and deceive me and did not tell me so that I might have sent you away with joy and with songs, with timbrel and with lyre, and did not allow me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Now you have done foolishly. It is in my power to do you harm. So they thought they were being cool. They, maybe they thought he wasn't going to be... Well, he wasn't going to be cool about it, but they ran. And he's saying, you didn't allow me to kiss my daughter. It's about to do your harm. But he admits, but the God of your father spoke to me last night, saying, be careful not to speak either good or bad to Jacob. Now you have indeed gone away because you long greatly for your father's house. But why did you steal my gods? Then Jacob replied to Laban, because I was afraid for I thought that you would take your daughters from me by force. The one with whom you find your gods shall not live in the presence of our kinsmen. Point out what is yours among my belongings and take it for yourself. For Jacob did not know that Rachel had stolen them. Another face plant. So Laban went into Jacob's tent and into Leah's tent and into the tent of the two maids, but he did not find them. Then he went out of Leah's tent and entered into Rachel's tent. Now Rachel had taken the household idols and put them in the camel's saddle, and she sat upon them. And Laban felt through all the tent, but did not find them. She said to her father, Let not my lord be angry that I cannot rise before you, for the manner of woman is upon me. So he searched out, but did not find the household idols. Then... Jacob became angry and contended with Laban. And Jacob said to Laban, What is my transgression? What is my sin that you have hotly pursued me? Though you have felt through all my goods, what have you found of all your, all, of all your household goods? Set it here before me. Set it here before my kinsmen and your kinsmen that they may decide between us two. These twenty years I have been with you, your ewes and your female goats have not miscarried, nor have I eaten the rams of your flocks. That which was torn of beasts I did not bring to you, I bore the loss of it myself. You required it of my hand, whether stolen by day or stolen by night. Thus I was by day, the heat consumed me, and the frost by night, and my sheep fled from and sleep my sleep fled from my eyes. These twenty years I have been in your house. I served you fourteen years for your two daughters and six years for your flock, and you changed my wages ten times. If the God of my father, the God of Abraham, and the fear of Isaac had not been before me, surely now you would have sent me away empty-handed. God has seen my affliction and the toil of my hands, so he re rendered judgment last night. Then Laban replied to Jacob, the daughters are my daughters, and the children are my children, and the flocks are my flocks, and all that you see is mine. But what can I do this day to these my daughters, or to their children whom they have borne? So now come, let us make a covenant, you and I, and let it be a witness between you and me. Then Jacob took a stone and set it up as a pillar. Jacob said to his kinsmen, Gather stones. So they took stones and made a heap, and they ate there by the heap. Now Laban called it Jagar Sha'adutha, but Jacob called it Galid. Laban said, This heap is a witness between you and me this day. Therefore it was named Galid. And Mizpah, for he said, May the Lord watch between you and me, that when we are absent from one another, if you mistreat my daughters, or if you take wives besides my daughters, 
Although no man is with us, see, God is witness between you and me. Laban said to Jacob, Behold this heap, and behold the pillar which I have set between you and me. This heap is a witness, and the pillar is a witness, that I will not pass by this heap from you uh, to you for harm, and you will not pass by this heap and pillar to me for harm. The God of Abraham and the God of Nahor and the God of their father judge between us. So Jacob swore by the fear of his father Isaac. Then Jacob offered a sacrifice on the mountain and called this, or called his kinsmen to the meal, and they ate the meal and spent the night on the mountain. Early in the morning Laban rose and kissed his sons and his daughters and blessed them. Then Laban departed and returned to his place. Whew. That's uh that's a little intense there, isn't it? It's just the way it happened. Well, let's go to the next one. See the his previous sin and the way things all went down. I think it made him a little nervous. I, I it made him afraid. It made him. He's a he seemed like a nervous guy. You know. Um, if he handled things a little, well, if he handled things differently, he didn't deceive his father. He never would have been there in the first place. But he deceived his father. He got deceived into marrying not who he thought he was going to marry and then got entangled in this uh, sibling-sisterly rivalry. Now, he's on his way back. Now, as Jacob went on his way, the angels of God met him. Jacob said when he saw them, this is God's camp. So he named the place Mahayanam. Dr. MacArthur says, with one crisis behind him and before him, the suspense of having to face Esau, Jacob was first met by an angelic host who must have reminded him of Bethel, which served also as a timely reminder and encouragement of God's will being done on earth. Mahanayim, meaning double camp, i.e. one being God's and the other being his own. It was located east of the Jordan River in Gilead near the river Jaddak. So he covers a good bit of ground here, looking at the map. So, Jacob sent, okay. I mean, now Jacob went on his way, the angels of God met him. Jacob said when he saw them, this is God's camp. So he named the place Mahanaim. Then Jacob sent before him, to let's just I'm just curious angels Malak Malak Then Jacob sent messengers before him to his brother Esau in the land of Ser, the country of Edom. He also commanded them, saying, Thus you shall say to my Lord Esau. Thus says your servant Jacob, I have sojourned with Laban and stayed until now. I have oxen and donkeys and flocks and male and female servants, and I have sent to tell my I have sent to tell my Lord that I may find favor in your sight. The Angelas, the messengers returned to Jacob, saying, We came to your brother Esau, and furthermore he is coming to meet you. And four hundred men are with him. Then Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed, and he divided the people who were with him and the flocks and the herds and the camels into two companies. 
And he said, if Izo comes to one company and attacks it, and literally smites it, then the company which is left will escape. Jacob said, oh, well, that's great. He's going <laughs> to, he, Jacob said, oh, God of my father, Abraham and God of my father, Isaac, oh, Yahweh, who said to me, return to your country and to your relatives and I will prosper you. I am unworthy of all the loving kindness and of all the faithfulness which you have shown your servant. For with my staff only I crossed this Jordan and have now become two companies. Deliver me, I pray you, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau. For I fear him that he will come and attack me. He will come and smite me and the mothers with the children. For you said, I will surely prosper you and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which is too great to be numbered. So he spent the night there. Then he selected from what he had with him. Um, what he had with him, uh, a present for his brother Esau. 200 female goats and 20 male goats. 200 ewes and 20 rams. 30 milking camels and their colts, 40 cows, and 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys and 10 male donkeys. He delivered them into the hand of his servants, every drove by itself, and said to his servants, Pass on before me and put a space between droves. He commanded the one in the front, saying, when my brother Esau meets you and asks you, saying, To whom do you belong, and where are you going, and to whom do these animals in front of you belong? Then you shall say, These belong to your servant Jacob. It is a present sent to my lord Esau, and behold, he also is behind us. Then he commanded also the second and third, and all who followed the drove, saying, After this manner you shall speak to Esau when you find him. He's like literally sending waves of <laughs> waves of gifts and like, oh, eh, eh, I, I, I'm your servant. And you shall say, behold, your servant Jacob also is behind us. For he said, I will appease him with the present that goes before me. Then afterward, I will see his face. Perhaps he will accept me. So the present passed on before him while he, he himself spent the night in the camp. Now he arose that same night took his two wives and his two maids and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. Um, woo! At Penuel. Or at Sakoth. Penuel, I think. And he, he took them and set them across the stream and he sent across whatever he had. Then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. Now, the site named Peniel. Oh, I see. It's uh, the first crossing of the Jabbok. They were going along the Jabbok from Mahanaim. And a man wrestled. Okay, the site named Peniel... Peniel, or the fa or face of God, given by Jacob in verse thirty here, and the company uh, commentary given by Hosea in Hosea twelve four identifies this man with whom Jacob wrestled as the angel of the Lord, who is also identified as God, a pre incarnate appearance of the Lord, who is also identified, or the as Yeshua, the Messiah. In the Greek, Jesus. In the English, Jesus. See the note on Exodus 3, 2. Now, that's what I believe. It's, yeah, Hosea 12, 4 identifies the man with whom Jacob wrestled as the angel of the Lord who was also identified as God. So now a man, and listen to, to Jacob's testimony here. A man wrestled with him until daybreak. 
So when he saw that he had not prevailed against him, he touched the socket of his thigh. Now is that the, the socket of Jacob's thigh was dislocated while he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for dawn is breaking. But he said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. He said, Your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with... Someone's trying to get in the door. Be right back. Hello. Oh, it's you. It's all good. It's all good. Don't worry. That was all good. That was, uh, yeah. Authorized person. Now, you gotta use whatever best weapons are available to you. I always have my sword here. <laughs> that hopefully one day will be beaten into a plowshare but yep you always gonna be ready with the best things available at hand another little one Kubaton. yep you don't want to get hit with that or this i think people people are probably more afraid of being stabbed than shot almost but you, know, you don't want to be stabbed or shot and i pray for peace for you and for me that we never have to do that um, but if you do, then you'll have the strength and it, it, it looks like here, you know, this, this wrestling, this training session is, uh, wow. Would you, you know, you, you imagine training with some of the best boxers in the world, the best MMA, you know, and getting that, but imagine training with Yahweh himself. <laughs> that's that's what we're that's what we're hopefully doing by praying and reading his word, right? So um then Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled him until daybreak. He saw that he had not prevailed. So I think he's building up, up Jacob here. What's your name? He said to him, What is your name? He said, Jacob. He who is i.e. he who strives with God or God strives makes sense he said your name shall no longer be Jacob but Israel for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed so wise to send the gifts out wise to take initiative to leave you have striven listen to God's testimony you have striven with God and men and have prevailed and I think through all his f frailty and his mistakes, he trusted God and he humbled himself before God. And he leaned on God even when he was afraid. And that is what's pleasing. Then Jacob asked him and said, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And he blessed him there. Maybe as if to say, You know who I am. So Jacob named the place Peniel, for he said, any like he did know, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been preserved. He said, I have seen God face to face. Now, the sun rose upon him just as he crossed over Penuel, and he was limping on his thigh. Therefore, to this day, the sons of Israel do not eat the sinew of the hip, which is on the thocket, so, uh, socket of the thigh. Oh, I thought, yeah, that's where I thought it was. He dislocated his thigh. That sounds painful. 
because he touched the socket of Jacob's thigh and the sinew of the hip. All right. This unique night-long wrestling match at Peniel ends with the 97-year-old Jacob having a change of name and the place having a new name assigned to it in order to memorialize it for Jacob and later generations the limp with which he emerged for the match from the match also served to memorialize this event the logistics of Jacob's careful appeasement strategy 550 animals Esau would prize may highlight his ability to plan but it highlights even more giving the goal statement at the end Verse 20, his failure to pray and to believe that God would change Esau's heart. Ah, uh, true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yes, he doesn't, he doesn't trust, but at the same time, it's, it's humble. Even though it's humble. He, well, it's fear because he thinks he, you know, he has, he's facing a superior force. He should trust God. I think there's a little, might possibly be some humility in there, um, giving such exorbitant gifts and uh, and such. Right. Well, um, Jacob's personal name changed from one meaning heel catcher or deceiver even to one meaning God's fighter or he struggles with God with God and men, an amazing evaluation of what Jacob had accomplished, i.e., emerging victorious from the struggle and the record of his life. Struggle did indeed dominate with his brother Esau, with his father, with his father-in-law, with his wives, with God at Peniel. Struggle, struggle, struggle. So... This is the last note on the sinew. This must refer to the um, sciatic muscle tendon, the observation that up to Moses' time to this day, the nation of Israel did not eat to this part of the hindquarter. And intrigues, uh, because it bears no mention elsewhere in the Old Testament, nor is it enshrined in the Mosaic law, it does not find mention in the Jewish Talmud as a sacred law. Hmm. All right. That was amazing. I mean, that it's harrowing. Um but the lesson continues. Trust Yahweh. Seek trust and seek righteousness and his kingdom first.